Hello, welcome to the Tuesday, August 13th, 2019 edition of the Sands and Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich, and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. Attackers are working their way through possible file extensions in order to infect users. The latest example is DAA files and one of our readers, Jason, did send us a file that he received. Now DAA stands for Direct Access Archive and it's a type of ISO files as you may know them from CD images. Now the trick here is that the AA files are less common. They're also not automatically mounted in Windows like ISO files. So a victim actually needs to have additional software available in order to read these files and be infected by it. One such tool is Power ISO. That's a for pay application. Did he suggests that this could be used in a more targeted attack where the attacker knows the victims are familiar with these type of files or we had one comment being submitted to this story that the power iso tool in particular is often also used in pirated versions I doubt there are a lot of legitimate reasons to receive DAA files as an email attachment, so I would probably recommend you just strip them out at your mail gateway. And a couple different news articles actually pointed to SQLite last week. SQLite is one of the software components that has long been overlooked. More recently, there have been a number of interesting vulnerabilities that were discovered in this library. Now, SQLite really doesn't have much in common with traditional SQL other than a similar query language. The data is stored in flat text files and from a security perspective, it actually looks pretty benign initially because there is no server listening and it's less exposed than your traditional SQL database. On the other hand, there are also a couple of shortcomings. It really just relies on the file system for access control. There is no logging in. There are no specific credentials typically to connect to a SQLite database. So any user able to read and write the files the data is safe to has access to the database. But in particular, in recent years, a number of applications that do actually accept traffic over the network have started to use SQLite as a backend database. Most notably here, I think, is WebSQL. WebSQL is part of many modern browsers. But uh, one item that actually made the news last week, I believe, is that a lot of Apple applications, like, for example, the calendar and the contact database, are using SQLite as a backend, no big surprise here, and apparently haven't patched it against some of the recent vulnerabilities that got discovered in the open source library. To really provide a good overview of all the different ways how SQLite databases can be attacked, Omar Gull from Checkpoint has put together a nice blog post with different attack possibility. Everything from your good old SQL injection to the ability to actually alter and overwrite files on the file system if the attacker is able to specify the file name that's being used in a particular SQLite query. So while SQLite is a lot less powerful and capable than your traditional SQL database, it still should not be overlooked. And I mentioned there were a number of vulnerabilities that were discovered in the very popular open source implementation of SQLite. And I guess the next story is sort of one of those sad, well, it's certainly not a surprise that printers are still very vulnerable. Researchers of the NCC group used basic fuzzing, which uh, well is one of your sort of standard security testing techniques to look at different uh, printers. They found about 50 different vulnerabilities in printers from Prada, HP, Kyocera, Lexmark, 
Rico and Xerox. So pretty much all of the large printer makers are affected here and none really is distinguishing themselves for being particularly secure. And of course, software components are often shared across different models of a particular printer manufacturer. So for example, for Prada, it's about 300 different models that are affected by these vulnerabilities. So if you do have a printer that's connected to the network and probably even if it's not connected to the network, it's just connected via USB and such, you probably still wanna watch out for updates coming up in the next few weeks. Well, and that's it for today. So thanks again for listening and talk to you again tomorrow.